of Tall People and Small People by Ellis Pierce Read by James Coss Once upon a time there were a king and a queen who longed to have child. They waited for years, but no child came. Eventually the queen said to her husband, Should I ask the small people to help us? The small people, asked the king. The queen nodded. The small people, you know, the little people who live in the highest tower of our castle? Oh, said the king, for he hadn't heard of them before. It wasn't very odd that he hadn't, really, because one did not bother the king with such small matters. He turned to ask the queen more about them, but she was already gone. The queen climbed the long staircase up to the highest tower of the castle, of the whole kingdom, in fact. Very tired, she arrived in the highest room, which was very empty. Small people, she called, small people, can I speak to you? The room remained just as empty as before. Small people, I should want a child so much, please can you help me? Suddenly a very small man stood in the room. He was so small he could have easily fitted into the queen's hand. He wore a very small jacket and a very small hose and an odd green hat on his very small head. The small man arched his back and looked up at the queen, setting his very small hands on his very small hips. He frowned a very small frown and said, We can help you, your tallness, but we have a condition. Anything, said the queen. The small man folded his arms and continued rather grumpily. The two tall people stop bothering us. It's always the same with you lot. Please cure my mother. Please give me a child. From now on, no tall person will be allowed to enter this tower. The queen nodded quickly. Of course, I shall see to it. The small man tilted his head to one side and studied the queen, his very small frown still over his very small brow. Then he nodded and clapped his hands twice. A very small doll appeared in front of the small man. Put this under your mattress tonight, he said, and you will have your child. The queen bent down to take the very small doll and thanked the small man. He merely frowned and then suddenly was gone. The queen looked around, but she couldn't see the small man, nor any other small person. The first thing the queen did when coming down the staircase was rest, for the staircase was very long, and it was tiring just to walk all the way down. Then she locked the door to the tower and threw the key in the castle moat. The next day the queen looked under her mattress, and the very small doll was gone. The small man hadn't lied. The queen gave birth to a beautiful little princess, though she was a little small. The king and the queen were very happy and held a large feast to celebrate. There were flags and clowns and everything else you'd expect at such a grand feast. And somewhere along the day, a very small man looked down into the crib with a very small smile on his face. Then he was gone. The little princess grew up into a beautiful little girl. She was still rather small, but no one wanted to tell the king and the queen who were so happy with their daughter. After all, there were a lot of small children, and that was not so very odd. The princess was kind and happy, and she could play all day everywhere she wanted everywhere, except for the highest tower of the castle. You can't go there, darling, said the queen every time. Why not? asked the princess then. But the queen would never answer that question. She only said that it was too complicated for little children to understand. The princess frowned at that and pouted, but the queen never gave in. She tried asking her father as well, pouting a little harder, but the king never gave in either, 
and sent her to her room. The princess pouted more and walked to her room, stomping her little feet as hard as she could. You see, she was a bit spoiled, the little princess. She always got whatever she wanted, and she really wanted to go up that tower. So the princess sat on her bed, sulking and thinking of ways to enter the tower. But she didn't find any. She'd thought of climbing up, digging her way under the wall, and perhaps finding herself a nice dragon to carry her to the highest room, but none of them had seemed very practical. You look sad, said a small voice. The little princess looked up and saw a very small boy looking back at her. She had never seen such a small boy before. He was even smaller than her smallest dolls. The boy held his head to one side and asked, Are you all right? Yes, said the princess, and she frowned. Who are you? My name is Tristan, said the boy. The princess studied the little man closer and then folded her arms over her chest. Do you know how to get into the tower? she asked. And Tristan laughed. Of course, he said. All you have to do is ask. That night, the little princess snuck out of her room and tiptoed through the castle. The castle was very big and dark, so it took a while before she found the door. It was a very big door and a very heavy one. The little princess pushed against it, but it didn't move. It was locked, after all. So the princess pouted at the door, but it still didn't move. Then she raised her hand and knocked on it three times. Yes, came a quiet voice from inside. I'm the princess, she said, and I'd like to see your tower. I'm sorry, princess, answered the voice, but tall people cannot enter here. The princess frowned. But I'm not tall. Everyone else is taller than me. Please, can I see your tower? The voice was silent for a while, as if it seemed to think over what she had said. It sighed. All right, then, said the voice. If you really want to, I can let you in. Really? asked the princess. Thank you. Then she heard a click, and the door opened. It was very dark inside, even darker than in the rest of the castle. The little princess looked around for the owner of the voice, but there was no one there. Then she looked at the stairs and noticed that they were quite awfully high. The princess swallowed, then took a deep breath and climbed the stairs. The next morning the princess was nowhere to be found. The king and queen were so worried that they ordered for the entire castle to be searched. They looked everywhere, in every pot in the kitchen, and behind every bush in the garden. Yes, also under her bed. They searched for three whole days, with everyone in the castle helping, but they didn't find her. They did discover a family of hedgehogs under the laundry who were not very pleased, and also a rather smelly lump of cheese in the broom closet, but they still couldn't find the princess. So the king was left no other choice. Edgar, he called to one of his ministers, or whatever your name is. The king had many ministers, you see, and he always forgot their names. He thought Edgar suited this particularly sour-looking man. Yes, your majesty, said the minister, who was actually called John. Edgar, I don't suppose you've seen my daughter? No, your majesty, I haven't, answered the minister. The king sighed and sat back on his throne. Well, then, let the whole kingdom know that the man who finds my daughter can marry her. The news spread very fast, as interesting news tend to do, and not even an hour later there was a queue from the throne room all the way to the castle gates. The king and the queen looked at every girl and then shook their heads. None of them was their little princess. They had nearly given up hope when a tiny voice drew their attention. 
your tallness it squeaked the king and the queen looked down to find a very small boy climbing up the armrest of the king's throne who are you asked the king the small boy didn't answer at once because he was very tired from climbing all the way up to the throne it is quite the distance when you're so small you know when he felt better again he said i'm tristan and i've found the princess the queen jumped up really where is she right here answered tristan and he pulled up a very small princess next to him she was really much the same as the little princess only a lot smaller the king and the queen stared at the little princess and saw that it was really her then the king became angry and asked how exactly his daughter had become so small so the princess explained she had climbed the tower and met the small people they had told her that tall people weren't allowed to enter and that there was only one solution make her small as well so that was what they did the king still looked quite angry so the little princess said i like being small papa now i'm the same size as them the king was still not happy with his daughter being so small but the queen smiled papa said the princess then you said that the one who found me could marry me didn't you the king grumbled a bit so that means i can marry tristan the king grumbled again but in the end he had to agree a promise is a promise after all so tristan and the little princess married and had a very small wedding with a very small table and very small plates and a very large cake because everyone else had to eat from it too and ever since that day the small people were truly left alone in their high tower so just a small warning if you ever see one a very high tower think twice about going up all right unless you'd rather be small of course